All right, and welcome back to the channel. Okay, we're making some progress. I found some time to do the valve springs and to get the heads onto the motor. I'll get into more details of that later on, but I wanted to talk about Tick Performance Valve Springs, the, uh, the double version, the TP650 version. Uh, super great product. I think this should be a standard in all LT1s, but there's a couple of catches when installing this. So I figured I'd just go and talk about it for a few minutes and show you the install. Now, there's many ways to install valve springs. I did it without using an air compressor. It's not because I don't have the air compressor or anything like that. It's just the fact that it was early in the morning and I didn't want to wake up the whole house. So with these LT1s, you can get away with that. And I use this, I'm not happy with this tool. It's, it's an okay tool, one of these eBay specials. Um, bolt onto the guide type of valve spring compressor it's uh, it's okay but the other valve spring compressor they ordered never showed up so this is what i had to work with and that's that then at the end of the video i'll get into a closer detailed or at least a closer view of the valve springs and how they sit on top of the valve stem and why you need to upgrade your rocker arms when doing this. So it's a relatively great package at 300 and something dollars, but you have to add more stuff, but it just increases the reliability and also the tick performance valve spring box setup comes with everything you need. So it's, it's really a no brainer. Okay, let's get into it. I'm going to try, I'm going to attempt to show you how to install the Tick Performance Dual Spring Valve Springs and some of the issues that you might run into, well not issues, but just some of the things for the double valve spring that you're dealing with versus a regular single valve spring. And the reason why this kit comes with, you know, a couple of extra parts. So again, these are the single valve springs that were used. These are the double valve springs. Now, you all laughed about my uh, valve spring compressor. It does work for the single valve springs, but for the double valve springs, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of wonky with that as far as uh, everything. But yeah, in a pinch, this does work. My other valve spring compressor did come in finally. I am not happy with it, but it's what I have to work with right now. So, gave you a little bit of a close-up shot. Now, with there's a couple of ways of doing things. Obviously, you you can use the air compressor, you know, the fitting for that goes into the spark plug to air up these air up the cylinder to keep the valves tight. But one thing's nice with an LT1 is that they have flat top pistons. So with the flat top piston, the valve springs do not, I'm sorry, the valves do not drop into the cylinder all the way. So, so basically what I'm doing, I'm seeing where the piston is via the screwdriver in a spark plug. So all I'm doing is put the hub in here. So I'm basically, I'm not using the bolt to the hub, never do that. But I'm going to find the piston, bring it all the way up. I could already feel it already. And it helps that the oil pan is off on, you know, but there's most likely most of you gonna be doing this in the car. So let's see if that's coming in. Yep. So I can feel the piston right there. So it's about top dead center. This particular valve spring tool is is not it's okay. You know, this is great when you're doing it on the car. I assembled the heads because I don't have the professional C-clamp that goes across, you know, the air pneumatic C-clamp. So this is the next best thing with the heads on the car. So it's clunky basically. Goes onto the pedestal and you can actually flip the shaft around from uh what is it, 7 16th to 3 8 so which is nice. Uh Amazon tool. Oops. This side, the bench side actually goes this way. It's from Amazon. It's like, I don't know. I'll put a link and this is the fastest tool that I can get because the other tool that I ordered did not come in. And this is what I have to work with. 
So basically I'm screwing it all the way down the pedestal. And what you got to do is line it up so it goes down like this. Now, since we're not going to be using air into the cylinder, this is just one technique to do this. Obviously, I do have the air compressor. I do have thing, but this is somebody that's in the garage that's doing this and whatever. I find this easier. So I'm bringing this piece down here, this sliding piece, all the way to its max before it drops off because this actually spins off. There's like a nut here that spins off. So I'm bringing this all the way down. See, so I'm going to do it I'm back into this. Told you it's clunky. So, so this has full extension. Another tool you're going to need is a magnet. There you go. So with the piston all the way up, the valve can only go so far down and at this full extension, you have access to the keepers. Go on. Two. And you got the valve spring. And notice the valve cannot go all the way down. Stuck. So the reason why you're extending this all the way out is that so you can, so with if the valve does drop, you still have enough to get to the keepers. Very simple, very easy. Uh, others stick a rope inside the spark plug to, you know, to give up even more of the void. That's a really good way of doing things too. And the reason why we got to go through all of this just to change valve springs is that you need to change. Let's get this off. We need to change the the valve stem steels. And the reason why we need to change the valve stem steel seals is that we need to get to this. this down here you can't take that off without getting the valve stem valve stem seals out but then you can't reuse them so in the kit in the tick performance kit it comes with everything you need which is fantastic you don't have to source parts they come with the good seals you gotta work it off i'm pretty sure it's an easier way to do this but in my monkey garage here this is what i do Come on, baby. Ah, boom. So now you got to get to this bad boy right here and swap it out with the provided washer, whatever you call this, from Tech Performance. And the reason why is that if you can see the diameter difference, on the inner diameter, which holds the spring into place. See that? That won't fit. No bueno. And you see this? Oh yeah, see? One versus the other. But this is also a locator, which keeps that spring centered in the pocket. So we're gonna drop that in. And it comes with beautiful positive valve seals, VTOL, VITOL, whatever you call them. Very simple to install. I use a, this is a, happens to be a 13 millimeter impact socket, which has like a, like a little nose cone here. And it fits perfectly over the outer rim of the valve seal. Basically you stab it on. There's some oil already on here. I like to put some oil in here just to give it a little bit of a break in. Very simple. Push down. You should feel it stop against the ridge of the, the valve of the head. Very gently. Just tap it. No big deal. So now we're gonna install the double valve spring. simple. Tick Performance gives you the titanium retainer and Crower Chromoly 
keepers. Race car stuff here. Very strong, reliable, so on and so forth. Now, we're gonna reset up the tool here. So now that we are gonna reset the tool, this is a little tricky here to get the keepers in with no air on the valve. So we're gonna reset this. At full extension, I'm gonna center this. Now, some people put grease on their keepers, depending on the application, if it's in the car, not in the car, you can put heavy grease on these and, it'll, and it sticks to the valve. But for here, you know, we're not really doing much. Now, I'm hoping this comes through, but you see how that valve is floating around in there? But, just pull it up. Put the valve keeper on this side first. See what I just did? I pulled the valve spring this way. Because this tool, the reason why I don't like this tool, it's not flexible. It doesn't allow you to move the spring around as you're trying to get the keeper in there. So you have to play the uh, squeeze in game as I call it. So this keeper's on this side. It's pushing against the retainer. It moved the spring just enough so I can get the other keeper in. Boom. Very simple. Get one of these types of hammers. It's a dead blow hammer. Smack it. Should make a nice boom. Basically what that's doing is that you're ensuring that this keeper is locked where it should be on the valve. And also visually look at it. If it looks crooked, if it's not seated flat with the other one. No bueno, take it apart, do it again. Attention to details. All right. Hope that helps. Okay, here's a close-up view of the valve springs installed on the head. And you can see how tight the clearance is between the top of the retainer and the top of the valve here. Now, this is how Tick Performance gets away with the spring package and the high lift. They make their own custom retainers for this kit, which is fabulous. This, this, this is just a technically a bolt-on setup for a stock head but with anything there's always a compromise and you do have to upgrade the rocker arms for this particular setup they claim that it you know from my previous videos I explained that that they claim is one manufacturer that you can get away with using a uh, self-aligned rocker arm but at this rate with a double valve spring you're gonna be spinning the motor up, you're gonna be spending money on some parts. You might as well update to a non-self-aligning rocker arm uh, just for the sake of reliability and higher RPM capability. So, but you can see the differences. I mean, there's just barely enough room, but with a proper rocker arm, it's perfect. So yeah, this is pretty good package. All right.